What's better than watching a handsome cop take down bad guys with his family of police officers? Bloopers of a cop trying to fight crime with his family. It humanizes our heroes and makes the show even more fun to watch. So, in today's video, we'll be talking about who has the most bloopers on the Blue Bloods. And we'll be ranking the cringiest moments from the show. Let's get into it. First off, Tom Selleck dubs Donnie Wahlberg as the blooper king. The CBS drama has managed to survive for 13 seasons. With almost everyone, either a cop or a detective, the family has blue blood. Even though the show is dramatic, things aren't always so serious, especially behind the scenes. After working together for 13 years, the cast has become close and knows how to have fun. Just look at the bloopers. In an interview with Tom Selleck and Donnie Wahlberg, we got to know a lot of the inside scoop. Turns out that the super serious detective is responsible for most of the blooper reel. Everyone looks at Wahlberg, and they just can't keep their composure. At least, that's what the mustached patriarch has to say. If you watch a blooper reel, you'll see that Donnie makes the most mistakes. But it's also obvious that he has the most fun. He often starts dancing, cracking jokes with the rest of the cast, and making fun of others when they mess up their lines. One of our favorite bloopers was when he stopped to pet a random puppy while they were shooting a scene and then laughed about it. Even after 13 seasons, it's great to see that the cast still has a great time making each other laugh. It's amazing to see these people who have been playing a family for so long that they've become one. It's so adorable. Now, let's look at the most cringeworthy moments from the show. This show has been in our hearts and will stay there forever. The tone of the show is very different from normal cop shows. It constantly goes from serious crime drama to heartfelt family melodrama and even a little bit of comedy. The cast makes the show what it is, super wholesome. But if you're a fan, you must know that it isn't perfect perfect. There are times when things on screen make you cringe. Hard. So, let's look at the top cringiest moments from the Blue Bloods. To start with, at the 10th spot, we have the Singing Officers. The series has many different things going on, so it's like we're getting multiple shows for the price of one. But the thing that we didn't expect was the show turning into a musical of all things. You know what we're talking about, the 12th episode of the 12th season, where Jamie tries to make things right at work and in his personal life, he had just lost his badge for driving drunk. In a shocking reveal, we discovered that there wasn't a crash after all. He was innocent. While welcoming him back into the precinct, his fellow officers started singing. The singing is weird in itself, but their song choice is weirder. They sang, Because I Got High, and then went back to work. Now for Baze impersonating Aaron at the ninth spot. Is making fun of someone because of how they look still funny? Not in 2022. We saw Jamie and Eddie's wedding during the last episode of season 9. However, the attitudes of the rest of the Regan family made us cringe bad. At the latest crime scene, Danny and Baze found a dead man on a bed. After looking at the few pieces of evidence, they decided they needed to see Erin to get a warrant. But for some weird reason, they decided to dress up like her and kept mockingly imitating her. It was cringeworthy because this particular kind of humor isn't funny. It's pretty cruel. A show that tries to talk about important things like family, crime, and life on the police force shouldn't look like it's trying too hard to be funny. Coming up at the 8th spot, we have the pranking incident. In an episode of season 5, when Jamie and Eddie found an abandoned duffel bag, they quickly called the explosive squad. But the bag only had a balloon sculpture inside when everything was said and done. It has been found that the street name of the person who made this piece called himself Spanky. Fans can quickly get that the nickname references the anonymous street artist Banksy. The name makes us cringe because it's not a clever pun. But what was more embarrassing was that the top cops on the force made such bad jokes about the guerrilla artist. Because it is so shallow, the humor in the episode felt out of place and embarrassing. When looked at as a whole, this sequence wasn't funny. These cops should stick to law enforcement, right? Let's look at Danny's breakfast at the seventh spot. Danny has been through the most out of everyone in the family. With Maria's help, he spends most of the fourth season trying to find a war veteran with PTSD. We loved seeing that he's a helpful person when things get hard. In this particular episode, he tries to make breakfast for his family and promises the kids that he'd make them pancakes with smiley faces. But he only makes enough pancake batter for the eyes and a half-hearted smile. It's a touching scene, but his kids and all of us felt a little uncomfortable, especially when the children told him the pancakes smelled. We felt so sorry for him. It was obvious that he was spiraling. It was just very uncomfortable to watch. 
Up next, at the sixth spot, we've timed like these. Unfortunately, in season 12, we felt the writers could put a little more effort into the story. Frank and Mayor Chase were already at odds, but things heated up when Frank made a public arrest that went viral. Eddie made up a story to explain to Jamie why she was in the hospital at the same time that a mysterious black envelope was passed around the house, even though no one wanted to open it. All of these plots were weak, but the fact that they don't fit together is the most cringeworthy thing about the episode. Fans hated this one because it just didn't make any sense. All of the characters did things they wouldn't normally do, and the storyline was awful. What's more, we've Aaron trying speed dating at the fifth spot. Dating is super weird. We all know that, but it's never as bad as this. In an episode from the fourth season, Aaron tried it out. Fans of the show know that her love life has been rocky. She was introduced as a single mother who had been divorced. She dated Charles, Jacob, and Jack Boyle somewhere along the line. The speed dating sequence was just so cringe. Also, it didn't seem like something she'd do. She's always been so sure of herself. Things got even worse from there. It was just horrible overall. She'd to bring shame of her failed speed dating attempts to work. It was so hard to watch. Following up, at the fourth spot, we have Eddie and Badillo's fight. We've all wanted Eddie and Jamie to get together since the first episode. At the end of the season 9, they finally got married. But after the wedding, new problems came up in their relationship. In the 12th episode of the 12th season, Eddie's new work partner, Badillo, tries to come between them. When he takes down three thieves by himself, we understand that he wasn't acting like himself, but it causes the couple to get into a fight. We quickly learn that the poor guy's bad behavior was caused by the fact that he saw a friend get killed, but his tense behavior wasn't just because he was lost. When a co-worker tries to interfere in a woman's personal life or romantic relationships, it's embarrassing. Jamie hoped they could work things out, and Eddie was finally ready to stop fighting. Sometimes, the series seems nothing short of perfection, but this isn't one of those times. Not to mention, Danny is trying to be funny in the third spot. We know that Danny is a loose cannon, but that's why people love him too. In an episode of the third season, he tried hard to be funny. He brought in a temporary partner, Candace McElroy, who had been to Afghanistan three times before. At first, he was kind to her. After Jimmy was thrown out of a moving car while carrying rodents in his underwear, they started to work on the case. Danny asked the paramedic in the middle of his conversation with him if the dead person had any identification or last words. As you might guess, his new partner wasn't impressed. He tried to take matters into his hands and took a picture of himself with the dead rat saying, cheese. It was a disgusting thing to do, and we are sure it made a lot of people nauseous. It wasn't funny at all. Now for the second spot, where an unlikely crossover took place. Even though it doesn't seem like Blue Bloods and RuPaul's Drag Race would go well together, the producers made it work. In season 4 of Manhattan Queens, Danny and Bays look into the death of a drag queen, Tiffany Lamp, who was killed by a club manager. The winner of season 5 of Drag Race, Jinx Monsoon, was in this episode too. She told Danny what happened the night Tiffany was killed, but as the episode goes on, the gruesome murder became forgettable. Obviously, he liked the show, but his cop buddies kept making fun of him for not being a man. Women in femme fatal outfits played the informants, and the victim was played by a stereotypically male character in a trilby. This episode was directed by Wahlberg, which makes it even stranger. The entire thing was just bizarre and not very politically incorrect. Finally, we have the way Angela was treated at the top spot. In an episode of season 12, a new employee posed a threat to Gormley, Garrett, and Baker. Officer Angela Reddick was quickly introduced and then demoted. Fans were outraged because this episode was so racist and sexist. We didn't expect this from the show. Even if what happened to the officer was realistic, the parts of the show that involved her were very hard to watch. Overall, it let us down. We expected more from our family in blue. That's a wrap for this video. Are there any other cringe moments from the show that we might have missed? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you at the next one.